When it comes to matching images to an explanation, you need to avoid the passive image trap, like this. I just mentioned the word trap, now I'm showing an image of a trap, but has it helped you in any way understand what I'm talking about? Passive images can brighten up a page if you're trying to make it look more interesting, but they do nothing to help the explanation or your audience. A bit like this. To understand the difference between passive and effective imagery, I'm going to use just one story but present it using a range of different techniques. To start, the least effective presentation technique is to just show your text on screen, word for word. I'll read this out so you understand the topic. So how does Google search so quickly to find results that are relevant? Well, they have dedicated data centers throughout the world. The interface is really simple, so it loads quickly. And of course, there's the Google algorithm, that smart bit of code that finds and ranks all the websites. Now, unless you need to show all of your text on screen, you should never really use this technique for presenting. It actually makes it harder for your audience to understand and remember the message. A step up from this would be shorter bullet points, probably displayed all at once with an image. This is the classic PowerPoint look. Since it's about Google, an obvious image choice would be the logo. Or maybe an image that represents speed, since the focus is on Google's search speed. Either way, these images do nothing to enhance the explanation. They brighten the page, but they're completely passive. The next level requires you to leave your passive imagery behind. To choose effective and impactful images, you need to really understand the message first, then identify the key or most important points. For this message, those points are how does Google search, dedicated data centers, simple interface, and Google's algorithm. Once we have these points, they're almost like instructions telling you to go away and find images that will support each point. Watch how the presentation has changed. So how does Google search so quickly to find results that are relevant? Well, they have dedicated data centers throughout the world. The interface is really simple, so it loads quickly. And of course, there's the Google algorithm, that smart bit of code that finds and ranks all the websites. Now in that example, the delivery was more sophisticated. The text looks more professional, and it was timed with dedicated images for each key point. Even though the images weren't animated, they provided extra information to help your audience understand the message. The last and most effective technique I want to show you builds on the principles from the last example. The key things to look out for are the size and position of the images and text, and the use of animation. So how does Google search so quickly to find results that are relevant? Well, they have dedicated data centers throughout the world. The interface is really simple, so it loads quickly. And of course, there's the Google algorithm, that smart bit of code that finds and ranks all the websites. Hopefully, you now understand the difference between passive and effective images. And this should help you choose imagery that really makes a difference in your own videos.